go to Charlie in Tampa. What's up, Charlie? Hey, John. Hey, Rachel. How are y'all doing today? Doing great. Thanks for calling. Good. Um, well, I have a question about uh, my wife and I have two children. We have a 15-year-old boy and an 8-year-old girl. And, um, you know, they've seen us in their lifetime on, you know, the Ramsey plan and, and doing our steps. And even the oldest um, used the envelope system when he, you know, got a small allowance as a younger kid. Well, this summer he has his first full-time job just during the summer. And uh, he's, you know, making his first paycheck. He actually just got this past Friday. And um, when I mentioned tithing to him, he's, yeah, his reply was, yeah, of course I'm going to give something to the church. But when he's teaching him the, the 10% standard, his eyes got kind of wide because based on a little $20 allowance here and there, that's a very small amount. But when he's looking at the $800 paycheck, you know, that's a lot of money at first. So the question is, um, I just assumed that, you know, we would require him to tithe being, you know, his parents and him leaving our home and, and following our example. Um, my wife's not at all opposed to that, but she brought up the, the possibility of him being able to make the decision for himself. And just wanted to see what, what you both thought on that. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, when it comes to giving, I think whether you're a parent teaching a child or it's yourself, I the legalistic side always rubs me the wrong way. So I'm always, we encourage 10% at Ramsey and I believe I t we tithe 10% even more Winston and myself. Um, so I believe in it a hundred percent, but I, I don't do it because it's a rule and it's an obligation. Uh, there's a heart change that occurs when it comes to giving. And so for him, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's a great exercise for him to learn to give period, right? Because you want to teach your kids the things when they leave home and become adults of like, here are the habits, here are the principles and the values that I want to instill in you as a, you know, as a parent to a child. So when you leave home that almost this is normal, this is, this is how you do life. And so giving is one of those things for me. So giving is non-negotiable. Now to require 10% out of every paycheck for him, um, I don't know. I mean, I, a part of me is like, I think it's kind of up to you as the parent to decide what it was. And I was thinking with mom at my parents, when we got an allowance, we did have to give, yeah, because we got like six bucks or whatever a week when we were kids. And it was like, yeah, you gave a dollar. It wasn't quite 10%. And, you know, it, they were not very legalistic about it. Uh, and then when I got, when I babysat and worked at the mall and all of that as a teenager, I did give out of it. But I honestly cannot remember, Charlie, if mom and dad made us do the 10%. Um, so for me, it's less, less of a math issue and more of a heart issue for him. And I want him to have the heart of a giver when he leaves home and not just like the mathematics of, I give 10%. And that's what I do. Does that make sense? It does. No, that's a good point. It's and, more of the spirit behind yeah, he, it that I want to encourage as a parent. Here's here's how how we do it in our house, Charlie. Uh, and very similar is, uh, I think, two guiding principles here. Number one, uh, Rachel says that, that more is caught than is taught. And so I think this is, he's old enough now to sit down with you guys and do your family budgets together. Hank um, is, my son's 12. He, he probably sits through one out of every three or four budgets now and he rolls his, oh gosh. Sorry, dude, you got to sit down and watch us do this. I want him to see that the first line in our budget is giving. And we've got, you know, tithing, but we've got places where we give. I want him to see this is how mom and dad roll with their money. He's watching it happen. Sometimes we let him hit the button to send payment X or whatever that, or this got automatically drafted. So we're showing him this is how we do this. The second thing is, is I do think it's important to, like, as there's a reason why you're, you're still the steward. You're still a custodian of that money, right? You're still in charge of your kid. And so in our house, we've said, you will give to something. W giving is non-negotiable. If at this age in your life, you are not choosing to give here, but you're going to give there, I'm going to let you make. So that's where the, that's where the decision-making capability is. So the, he's going to see, my son is going to see, we give to this particular organization that we believe in. We tithe in this way. So every Sunday morning, hey, the lights are on here and the air conditioner works here and our pastors can get up on stage and feed his family because we give, you will give, but you're going to give somewhere. So that's where that latitude comes in. Does that make sense? Because I'm with Rachel. The last thing I want to do is have a son who is counting dollars in a, on a spiral notebook that he was forced to quote unquote give away to a thing he doesn't. You, you see what I'm saying? No, that's a good point. Um, yeah, very, very good to see that that perspective. Because have, you know, we both have no doubt that he is a very generous young man. We've seen mm -hmm. that. 
We just want to continue to promote and, and encourage that and, and no doubt that he'll be blessed through that, you know, as, as we are. And he sees, he sees that and yeah. all the things that, you know, we're blessed with and able to do together. That's, no, that's a very great point, and that's a good takeaway. Yeah, and, and one thing, too, Charlie, with parents that uh, – and obviously you and your wife have done a fabulous job. I mean, from what even you've said in this call, I'm like, man, that's such good intentional parenting uh, when it comes to money and your kids. Uh, but, and I'm not saying this is you, but there are some people that listen to this show religiously, and they are – they are hardcore and it is like there's no room for mistakes and we're going to make the kids do everything perfect and we got this and this, this and while the motivation is good because you're like I want my kids to learn this I don't want them to make the mistakes I made uh you have to give room for mistakes for your kids to learn on their own and so it's better for them to make small inexpensive mistakes under your roof versus going out in the real world and the first time that they make a mistake uh you know that it's that it's out there. So I'm saying all this to say for for your son, say you guys said, hey, you have to give, but the amount you want to give, we're going to let you choose. And let's just pretend, Charlie, he gives 1%. And he's like, here, here's just a little bit. And then maybe another month, he's like, oh man, I, I do feel like I really love this thing that I'm giving to you. I'm going to give a little bit more. And he starts to learn himself. The feeling of, the feeling yeah, of the wow, of- what the joy of giving, you know, brings in him and he's learning that at 15 versus it being a mandate of that 10 percent so and one quick side note i i don't have any data on what i'm about to tell you here's a decision i've made in my wife and i've made in our house i've invited my son in to he has a ballpark of how much money comes into our house every month and i i was left out of that conversation growing up i had no idea um, and so I think that helps with perspective when he says, whoa, 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 it was way easier to put $2 in the, I don't know, the collection plate, whatever that looks, when I made 20 bucks. It's hard to put $50 when I make mm-hmm. 500 and you can it say, is. yeah, I make 75000 Here's what <laughs> I'm putting in, right? And so it helps norm that scale, right? That question you're asking, it helps. And again, I know your kid, he could probably go run to school and say, can you believe my mom and dad make this much? We have had hard conversations about don't talk about money and this is the right way to do this and let's be respectful and these are private numbers, et cetera. But I've just opted to yeah. let him sit down and say, here's what's coming in and here's what's going out. It's I good. want him to have a picture of how the world works. Right? Yes, yes. And that may backfire on me. No, I don't <laughs> think it will. No, I don't think it will. No. I don't know. I know. Isn't that fat? Yeah, that's a it, – it, I think it's so good to show numbers to a point to, to, to your example of like, okay, here's real world. And here's what this looks like. And yeah, here's how much cable is. Comcast that work out of our paycheck. Yeah, those shows you watch. Yeah. Here's here's Netflix and Disney. And they're seeing the dollars leave the paycheck, like literally. Yeah. Uh, I think is yeah. I or it was so it was the it was the light bill was the one he saw it on the counter. Uh huh. And he was like, how much? I, yeah, it was staggering, right? Yeah. To to a middle schooler, you know, however many hundreds of dollars. Like I couldn't wrap my head around that. And yes. It's like, when I tell you to turn the lights off in your bedroom, that's and why. it was like, oh, <laughs> you totally. know what I mean? Yep, yep. Uh, when you crank the air conditioner down to like, it has a cost to it, right? See, mom and dad, they did that. They shared certain things, specific numbers, but they we never knew how much they like. Maybe they just didn't trust us. Yeah, I wouldn't have <laughs> trusted were, you. I don't think they were like we're absolutely not giving Rachel any of that information. My son is so much more trustworthy <laughs> than you were. Exactly. Hank Curley probably. But hey, he is. important thing, Morgan and A, like I'm going to reiterate Rachel said, grateful for your intentional parenting and parenting. If you want your kids to start engaging in certain behaviors, remember, they watch you way more than they listen to you. So if you want them to be givers, you be a giver. You want them to be generous, you be generous. How you tip people, how you love people, how you tithe and give, if that's part of your value system, whatever that looks like for you, model it and be intentional about teaching your kids.